Welcome back to the Gotanium Show. Today we are talking about keep it simple sensor. The old KISS principle, keep it simple, right? Well, I have a coworker who's been dying to show you just how easy it is to make sensors in Tanium. A lot of times you think it's more complicated. You look at those that come out of the box, you think, oh my goodness, I could never write that. But Scott's here to show you how easy it really can be. Scott, introduce yourself. Well, happy to do it. Uh, and thanks a bunch, Ashley. Um, yeah, my name is Scott Harris. Uh, I'm an enterprise service engineer. Um, I've been with the ESO organization and with Tanium for almost two years now. And it's a, a fantastic thing to be able to come out here and show you guys uh, how to create sensors and really how simple it can be. Tell us a little bit more about the enterprise services organization. Well, the enterprise services organization is really designed to provide that, that hands-on keys level of support for our customers uh, to be able to, to get access to an environment, to, to um, sit side by side with our customers and show them how to use Tanium, uh, to help them develop things, to, to help them really drive the platform, um, to be able to use it fully in their particular environment. Oh, that's great. And again, this show is not about sales necessarily. But if you would like some help side by side with you in the Tanium console, reach out to your account team and ask them about the enterprise services that are available to you. So enough of that. Now let's talk about the technology at hand here, sensors. Scott, I know you've written some custom sensors for some of your customers in your role. Can you give us some examples? Well, the one of the, my favorite ones that comes to mind is one that I wrote to um, look at all the PowerShell script files in a particular environment, actually in the whole enterprise, and to be able to check and see if they're signed or not. And it's something that's a, a very useful thing to do because you don't want unsigned scripts in your environment. And it was actually relatively straightforward to accomplish in Tanium. Fantastic. Well, that does sound a little bit more involved than what we might be doing today. So why don't we just uh, dive straight in the console and let's uh, start out. Show us how do we write sensors? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to do it. Let me share my screen and I'll show you how this all comes together. And you're going to get a kick out of this uh, because it is so simple to be able oh, wait, to Oh, wait, wait, wait. You're using dark mode. Yeah. I love dark mode. I am all about the dark mode. My eyes have thanked me over and over again as soon as I got a dark mode up and running. Because I'll tell you what, um, that bright stuff really fries my brain. So <laughs> I am all about dark mode. But let me show you how this works here. All right. Um, I've gone to our content section under the sensor category. And I'm just going to hit the new sensor button. And we're actually, we're going to be real simple, to be honest. So... I'm actually gonna create a sensor. I'm gonna call it Hello World. It's really that simple. And I'm gonna go down here and enable the sensor for Windows. I'm gonna select its type. I'm gonna use PowerShell because, well, PowerShell is my jam. And write output. Hello world. And that is really, that is really it. My sensor for windows is done. And um, you know what? I want to point out something really yeah. stupid here. I think every developer that uses hello space world is doing it grammatically incorrect. Oh, really? And is this, is, can I say, is it should be grammatically incorrectly? I don't know. Anyway, there should be a, it's a, isn't it, they call it a positive or you're addressing someone you're supposed to put a comma, hello, comma world, right? Yeah. Anyway, just a little observation from years in the industry of watching everybody do hello space world. <laughs> no, I got you. And that makes sense. Um, <laughs> but, right. I'll tell you what, just for you, I'm adding the comma. All right. But I'm also going to be doing something really lazy here. I'm going to copy this. Of course, I don't have a copy on the right click, but take this over to Linux and pop that in. Hello world.
And there we go. There is my sensor for Linux. I'm going to attempt the copy and paste one more time. Hey, it works this time. All right. So, so let's, have... let's point out the, the beauty of this. This is one sensor in Tanium that's going to hit, in this case, three platforms at the same time. That's pretty cool. Three different operating systems. Absolutely. And I think it's fantastic that, you know, all it really takes is a basic understanding of scripting on that particular platform. And as you may know, you know, in Linux, it's good practice to start off with this, with a shebang there. And same thing on a Mac. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that in there. And yeah, absolutely. Three sensors, good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here. Save it. Okay, now this doesn't seem to be saving right now. Let me see what's going on. Oh, got to add a content set, of course. And right now I'm going to go ahead and put it into default. And I do want to mention that, you know, when choosing a content set, especially when making your own content set, it's a really good idea to put a prefix on there, perhaps with uh, the engineer's name or something like that. Uh, so you can keep track of different engineers' projects and make sure that they don't get all mixed up. Now, now that I have my default content set selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit my save button again. And here we are. Hello world. Good to go. And I'll just go ahead and run that. So we'll do get hello world from all machines. And it is truly that simple. And this works like every other sensor you've seen in Tanium. Um, you can use all of Tanium's features. So for example, you can do a drill down with it and you can go ahead and say, like, get operating system. From these particular machines with my drill down. And if you notice, it's running on Windows, running on CentOS and running on my Mac. Very nice. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Absolutely. But of course, that's a real simple, basic thing. But I wanted to show you something a little bit more useful. Now, another sensor that I wanted to create, and I wanted to show the process of creating more importantly, was a sensor to get CPU type. Or actually, yeah, CPU type. That sounds good. You don't have the uppercase that for me, man. Sorry. Oh, I know I'm, I'm being a, a total yeah. detail guy. Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> uh, we can we can tell you what, Ashley, we can do it your way. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and set my CPU type sensor name here. And I'm going to enable it for Windows, choose my PowerShell again. But now I'm going to show you something else here kind of like my quick process on, on how I develop a sensor. And of course, I'm doing this in my lab. This is not in production, but I kind of want to show you the steps that I take when I go and, and create a sensor that does something you know relatively simple, like getting the CPU in the system. So I'm going to go back over here to my desktop and I'm going to bring up my shell to my Windows box. And, and I have by the way, that, that's a really cool wallpaper. You got to <laughs> get some 80s love there. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah, and and you're already freaking people out because if they if they're not used to using a Mac, how in the world did you get a Windows PowerShell prompt on a Mac? It's built in, man. Well, at least built into the Windows, right? You go to your Windows uh, PC, you go to Add Feature, Open SSH Server. It's built in. Microsoft supports that that uh, Open SSH now as a server. Okay. Just so now we've it, got a remote shell on Windows box. Cool. Yep. Yeah, very straightforward. And so you log into it, start a PowerShell, you're good to go. And so um, this works just like any other, uh, you know, PowerShell session. Right output. We're good. So you should make, it's 80s. Cool beans for good guys. Right. You know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's how we do it, man. But in order, of course to get information about a processor on, on Windows, you just do a get 
WMI object. And you do, what is that? Class when, oh, oh got to fix this for you. When 32 <laughs> process soar. And here we go. Get my two different CPUs in my system. And all it takes in PowerShell is to go ahead and select the proper object. And you can do that by just put, popping something in the parentheses, put that object inside the parentheses, and then just with the dot notation, pick your particular field that you want. Okay, I'm now getting my processor listed here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a select object to make sure I only grab the first one because I don't need to see this twice. Select object, first one. There and there we go. And now this is a perfectly good sensor to pop into Tanium. I'll go ahead and grab that, copy it, kick it back over here to my Windows sensor code. And of course, fix this broken line here. And this is my sensor code for my Windows sensor that I'm creating today. So good to go here. Same thing for Linux. Let's go ahead and try that. Let me go ahead and close this out because I'm done with here. And here's my Linux box. And it's a very similar thing. So I do cat proc CPU info, if I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. And I get all my CPU info, very straightforward. I see my model name here. That's what I'm interested in. And I noticed that it's, it's being separated by a, a colon here. And so I can go ahead and focus on that model name line by just piping it to grep or quote model name. Excellent. Of course, I have it here twice because it's two CPUs in the system. So I'll go ahead and do a dash M. It should give me my first one, except for it's the wrong command line flag. Dash M1 is the, what I want. And then I can go ahead and pipe that and cut it based upon my colon that I've seen. So that's cut slash D and then do my colon and then choose the second item. And there we go. So I've split that particular string into two pieces, where one that says model name, one that actually gives me the CPU information. And then I've told it that I want that second item, which is that CPU information. Now, because I'm crazy, I hate that we have some white space here right in front of that Intel. And so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that too with another cut command. And that cut command is C, two and that should get rid of the first line or the first character in a particular string and then there we go and that is really it so that is my linux sensor good to go it gives uh, i run that too, man i like that yeah you, you, all it takes is is running this command in a sensor and let's see here copy that out pop that here into my Linux. All right, and then we are mostly good there, except for, of course, I have to put my shebang in the beginning. Perfect. And then last but not least, of course, is the Mac sensor. And this one I'm really proud of, to be honest, uh, because the Mac sensor, it's a little tricky to get your Mac sensor right. And the reason, of course, for that is because uh, the Mac 
has switched platforms recently. And typical ways of finding out CPU information may or may not work. So what I've researched is a way to find uh, the type of processor in a Mac that even supports the new M1 processors. So, and that's really straightforward. All it takes is taking a look at sys CTL dash A to get everything. And then I need to do a grep and I mock, grab mock depth. CPU. While you're typing that, a piece of quick trivia for everyone. GREP mm -hmm. the, is actually an acronym that stands for Generalized Regex Parser. Ooh. There's your trivia for the day. I love that. I didn't know that one before for sure. But as you see, after I run this command, I get a bunch of information about my processor, including, of course, the processor type itself. And they call it brand string on a Mac. And I'm just going to copy that because why type things when you can copy them? It really helps with typos. Perfect. And then, then just like my sensor that I created earlier, I want to select the information after the colon and probably kill the white space. So I'm just going to steal it because I think that's the way to do it right there, copy that, paste it in there, and boom, there we go. Sweet, that's efficient, man, love yep. it. And that's my Mac sensor, good to go. So let me go ahead and pop that in there, add my shebang. And then I will go ahead and check. Yep, I'm using CPU type, default content set. Got all my sensors in and good to go. And I love it because that's really all it takes. And I'll show you how this works. So now I can go ahead and get CPU type from all machines. And there we go. There's that Apple M1. Doing it live. Yep, doing it live, man. Yep. The new hotness. Live. By the way, Tanium client works on the new Apple M1. Sweet. And if you notice here, I'll go ahead and drill down into my uh, Xeon CPU here, and I'll go ahead and get operating system. And if you noticed, even though it came from multiple operating systems, Tanium sees it and, and combines those together into one category as it's intended. And whether it's coming from Windows or where it's coming from Linux, you know, the enterprise version, the server version, um, it all parses out correctly and uses that, that uh, efficiency that Tanium gives you, right? But that's really kind of what I wanted to show in a nutshell. Um, I wanted to really uh, portray that building sensors in Tanium is actually something that you can do. You can do it really quickly. And it doesn't take a whole lot of time, at least to get some value out of it. It took me a little bit of time to research exactly what command I wanted to use on each particular platform. But really bringing it all together is really straightforward. And I know it can be intimidating if you look at the sensors that exist in Tanium and you see, you know, line after line of, you know, code of script in, in different languages. And you might think that it's, a, it's kind of a high bar to be able to create a sensor. Um, now, it's important to be careful when you create a sensor. You want to do it in a, in a smart way, maybe not checking network shares or, or doing network things. Um, but it's actually a very doable thing. Well, thank you, Scott. That, I really appreciate how short and simple this can be, you know, because we live in a world of growing complexity in IT. 
And there's still a few things that we can keep simple. And that's, you know, whenever I talk about Tanium off of the folks, I say it's an endpoint management platform with real-time visibility and control with speed, scale, and simplicity. And this is the simplicity part here. Now, granted, you can make it more complicated if you want, but thank you, Scott, for showing us how easy it really can be. Anything else before we wrap up? No, I think that really does it. It's really that simple. I, I encourage you to you know, spin up your lab or use your lab if you have one. Um, always have a lab, to be honest, because that's where you want to play. And uh, by all means, go play. Have fun with it. All right, folks. Well, you knew you weren't going to get out of this show without a couple community post references. So we have been doing this a long time. And to prove that point, here are a couple articles from the community site. They're actually kind of old from 2018, but they're talking about stuff that still works today. We've got the eight best practices for writing sensors. And where's my output? Debugging tips for when sensor results go awry. You want to go ahead and check those out, as well as a couple other resources I have here for you. So, uh, number one, Tanium is for creators. That's one of my favorite slogans. It's like a big box of Legos. You can build whatever you want with it. Uh, it's cross-platform. We just saw the ease there that Scott did Windows, Mac, and Linux to get those results across the environment. And probably, like he said, the hardest part was just finding the commands. Writing it was pretty quick, actually. So you can also go look at your enterprise scripts that you use today. Repurpose those inside of Tanium. I've done that with my customers. Make sure you test in your lab. Please don't test in production. And then uh, involve your account team if you have any questions about whether something's safe for your production environment. And just as a reminder to our TAS customers, you can do this also, but first you must complete a training class, which I have linked here. Our advanced content class it is HTTPS bit.ly DIY Tanium. That is a case sensitive bit.ly link that will take you to the Tanium training page. On there, you're looking for the advanced content class. You might recall back at episodes nine and 10, I interviewed Rory from Tanium, who helped write those classes. And he told us a lot about the philosophy behind custom content inside of Tanium. So you can go back and check out episodes nine and 10. Also, make sure to take these classes. They're free. Just have to ask your account team to get uh, in contact with them. You can even take a web-based version of it. And it's very important because there are some nuances here that aren't intuitive. I'll just be straight up with you, right? Um, whether it's 32-bit versus 64-bit issues, um, you know, referencing different types of Tanium objects, perhaps once you get into the advanced concepts, making sure you're respecting the CPU on thousands of endpoints in your environment. There are a lot of things you want to consider. So please take the advanced content training for free, talk to your account team about how to get that. And as always, you can interact with Scott or myself in the Tanium community site there under the Go Tanium discussions link. We would love to have a conversation with you and a dialogue with maybe give you some advice on something that you're trying to build inside of Tanium. Thank you, Scott, for coming on the show today to show us just how easy it can be to author sensors inside of Tanium. Oh, happy to do it, Ashley. I appreciate you inviting me on. Yeah, this is great content. This is the kind of thing that we want to give our uh, users, our viewers, so that they can see how easy it is to get started with Tanium. And until next time, go Tanium! Mm -hmm.